Well, hello there, everyone. Hopefully you're doing outstanding. This is Maskey Finance coming to you for the second time today, Saturday, January 20th. And I can tell by talking, because the missus isn't here, so I'm alone. Um, my hearing's still messed up, so hopefully I'm not talking too loud or quietly. But anyway, I want to mention something. I'm, all, I'm constantly thinking about investing, it seems like. So I forgot to mention something in my first two videos talking about buying how I bought real estate real estate and then how I moved into Gary, Indiana. But anyway, before I get started, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not a CPA, I'm not an attorney, not a doctor or nutritionist. I may need to see a doctor because my hearing seems to get worse. But we'll see how it is tomorrow because I dislike going to doctors. I try not to. Plus, I am living here with no health insurance because medical care in, Ch in Panama is so cheap, just as an example. I'll, I'll digress him for a second. <clears throat> I did go to a dentist two weeks ago or so, just for routine cleaning and that sort of thing. And my total price was something like $46.75. Where I was at in Florida, that routine dental cleaning was probably, wow, $150, $200, $225, something like that. Big price difference. Anyway, something I forgot to mention, my apologies. I bought a total of 13 houses out of my 25 using recycled capital. Okay? Recycled capital. I've had some people tell me, Maskey, you saved for 20 years. Okay? I saved for 20 years in a 457 plan. I use that to buy a triplex. So people think, you got 25 units because you're old. You saved all those years. Okay. So let's do this in a way. You could say that triplex I bought, my down payment was from a 457 plan. Maybe you don't count that per se. Uh, you could say I got a HELOC. I used it to help me get a first couple rentals. I got a HELOC for $30,000. If any one of you have bought a house in the last two, three, four years, depends on where it's at in the country, you may have enough equity to get a HELOC for $30,000 like I did. I've said the terminology that HELOC helped me to fund my down payments. It didn't fully make my down payment. It helped me to fund them. So what do I mean by recycled capital? Hopefully the lighting in here is okay because it's nighttime outside my casita. I got the shades pulled down too. So recycled capital for 13 properties. I can almost say in a way, kind of, sort of, those 13 free houses were free houses because it was recycled capital. What is recycled capital? <laughs> I said something about this in, I think, my video two days ago. I sold, or maybe it was today, I sold one house. It was the second rental property I bought in the Shenandoah Valley. I made that profit on it, and I got back my down payment. I then turned around and bought four properties. So I sold one. I pulled equity out of that house, along with that down payment. But most of it was the equity. Pulled equity equity out by selling it, by selling it, and bought four properties, okay? So I think about what I did. I said this in a different video. I bought the four up in Gary, Indiana. The one I sold was in Virginia. That's a key. I'm gonna give you another key here in just a second. I then did, I told you about my 401k loan. That's another free house in Birmingham, Alabama. I used 401k money, we took a loan out, we did a refinance and paid that loan completely back. Free house in Birmingham, Alabama. If you want me to talk more on 401k loans, I can do that in another video because I am tired, my hearing's bad, etc. 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 So how did I buy the, the next nine houses with recycled capital? I bought nine more houses using seller financing in Gary, Indiana. I mentioned that today. Those nine properties, nine. How did I get the down payments? for those nine houses. How did I pay closing costs or whatever? I Cause you always gotta pay some kind of closing costs just to do the title work and that kind of stuff. Even though I didn't have mortgages, I had seller financing. How did I get that money? Recycle capital. I did two cashback refinances on two of my rental properties in Virginia. Key, in Virginia. I did a uh, cash back refinance on my very first rental property. I got a mortgage on it back in January 2017. And this was in 2020, so it's a couple years later. It, 
I had fixed it up a little bit, bought the house at a good price. It was now worth more. So I did a cashback refinance. I pulled some cash out, not a lot. I think it was like 20 some thousand dollars I pulled out of that. Simultaneously, I did a <coughs> cashback refinance on my triplex. Triplex was also in Virginia, key. I'll explain about that key in just a, a moment. That triplex, I bought it at 199,000 and some hundred. I then put a lot of money into it. I rehabbed inside and outside all three apartments, fences, parking lots, et cetera, et cetera. I then did a cashback refinance. I forget what it appraised at exactly, but I pulled out something to the effect $45,000, $50,000, something like that. All in, I believe, I between the two different properties, I pulled out something like $65,000 cashback refinances. Meaning, I kept that single family home, my very first one in Virginia, and I still own my triplex, but I pulled the money out, the equity out. And the second, first time, I bought four houses. The second time, I bought nine houses. Remember, seller financing, those nine houses were all cheaper. Cheapest ones were in the low 30s. Most expensive one was forty-nine to fifty thousand dollars. Do the math. I put twenty percent down. Twenty percent down on fifty grand is ten grand. Twenty percent down on thirty thousand dollars is like I don't know, it's not very much at all. <laughs> okay, so my sixty-five thousand dollars was enough money, I believe, to fully cover my purchase of nine properties with the down payments. And the closing cost. I know the title company. I remember them telling me they were giving me a break on the fee they charged because I was doing nine houses more or less at the same time. And I had done all my houses in Gary through the same title company. So they gave me whatever the price was. It was a little bit of money off. So it was less money out of pocket. Okay. So that's what I did. Recycled capital. So... This is me thinking about why people say I use stock money to buy my ha my houses. I save for 20 years to buy my rental properties. Yes and no. My stock money was in Roth IRAs. I made a mistake in today's video. I had a normal Roth IRA. I had it with Schwab at the end. I had other companies in the beginning and my Roth ended up with Schwab. I own stock in it. And in my wife's Roth IRA at Schwab, we own stock in her Roth also. I sold that stock, transferred it over to a new self-directed IRA account, bought one house in my name, or my, my self-directed IRA name, one in my spouse's self-directed IRA name, okay? Um, so that was the two houses we bought with stock money. My triplex I did by get, using the down payment for 20 years of saving money in a 457 plan. 20 years. I did not make a lot of money. I started out in 1993 making $23,000 a year. When I retired in 2018, I was topped out making $52,000 a year. So when you say you don't make enough money, 1998, I was making $23,000 a year. 2018, I was making $52,000 a year. I bought rental property, not making a lot of money. I bought the majority of my rental property after I had retired from working full time. Okay, I, was, I had a pension coming in, not a paycheck. It's a big difference. And I worked part time at the YMCA, and they started me off at minimum wage and then gave me a little bump up in pay when they found out I was overqualified for the position, um, and so on, so on, so on. <clears throat> so, anyway, the key, the key, the key. What is the key to how I did this? I spelled it out for you. You already got the answer. I sold a house and did two cashback refinances on two other properties. So three properties in Virginia. I bought the total of 13 properties in Gary, Indiana. Virginia is more expensive than Gary, Indiana. So if you start off buying rentals in your backyard, and let's say you're on the East Coast or you're on the West Coast, it's expensive. But if you can do it, you get one or two or three, or you get your primary residence and you get some equity build up in it. Can you sell a property that's expensive and buy a couple cheaper ones out in the Midwest? Maybe, not telling you to do it. 
Sometimes it's better to own quality houses in a better market in your backyard, sometimes. Other times, for someone like myself, who didn't have a lot of money, I wanted to go to a cheap market to ratchet up my amount of rentals so I could become financially independent and stop working completely and move to Southwest Florida and then eventually move down to Panama. <laughs> okay, so that's what I did. And that's kind of why I did it. And once I got there to those 25 rentals, I kind of, sort of, I didn't do this immediately, make that decision, but I kind of start, decided to start deviating from buying real estate and buying some alternative investments because I saw problems with Gary rental property. And we don't talk about that too much, do we? So I wanna save that for my next video where I do talk about all the cash flow I get and prices I paid. And, and even though I've kind of hinted at some prices I paid, I'll give you specific prices with specific rents and sp specific cash flows. In my next video, I may give it a couple of days. Hopefully my hearing will uh, get better. My head will clear up. You can tell my, I can talk okay, I think. I'm not all clogged up, nothing like that. There's no sinus pressure in there. It's just the ears. It's, they're full, can't hear too good. Anyway, all right, so with that being said, this is long enough. I'm hot. This room is, I came over here, I was doing some exercise in my house. Um, like I said, uh, the, the missus isn't there. I was watching a good video with uh, my buddy, Justin Nelson. He was on Millennial Mike's channel. Justin also has his own channel. Justin has been on my channel. He, young guy who invested in Kentucky, and he bought like 18 rental properties in about two and a half years, just starting in 2021. So when you say you can invest right now in 2024, yes, you can. I saw another uh, video with a uh, financial firefighter who had a young lady on there, Sherry Smith, I think her name was, something like that. Don't hold me to that. And she brought up mindset. It's your mind. It's what you think about. How did I come up with getting HELOCs? How did I come up with selling and buying in a different area? How did I learn about the 401k loan to get a free house? How did I do all this? How did I making in 1998, $23,000 a year to 2018 making $52,000 a year? How did I become a multimillionaire? It's the mindset. And like I said, once I got there, I did not keep chasing the numbers. I didn't care. I just wanted out of Virginia for my own personal reasons to go to a new place and then to go to another new place. That's just what I wanted to do. I encourage you though, get more of a cushion than I did. My cushion's coming. I'm still building my cushion. Um, but I was just ready to jump. I'm young-ish. Uh, I can be frisky. I jump into investments. I did it with real estate. I did it with stocks. I just jump into it. I figure I can either sink or swim. And I eventually learned how to swim. And that's what I did with real estate. I jumped in. I figured it out. Through the first one, I about failed. I floundered. I had to pick that first tenant. And by the time I got to 25, I was like, I figured out how to kind of play this game. Let's get a new game. So I started buying mineral rights acres and oil drilling and other stuff. So, but anyway, recycling capital. Maybe that's something you stick it in your tool belt. Maybe it's something you can do where you live at. Maybe it's something you can do on a rental property you have in the Midwest. Maybe you can sell it and maybe it's paid off because it was cheap. Or maybe you have a lot of equity in it because prices went up. And you can pull some of that equity out to buy another investment. I've done the same thing with my Florida house. My Florida house is an Airbnb. I've gotten a HELOC on that Florida house. And that's using me, help. I'm using that to help me make some investments too. Yeah, recycling capital, using that equity. That's the key to my success. Not everyone does that, not everyone needs to do that. It worked for me, maybe it'll work for you, Maybe it won't. We're all different. 
but we all have our journeys through life. The older I get, the better I understand this. I am seeing too many people around my age dropping off. I'm seeing too many people around my age dying. I'm seeing too many people younger than me becoming diabetic, getting heart disease, and so on and so on and so on. We gotta take better care of ourselves. We gotta take better care of our financial futures. All right, so with that being said, I'm gonna get back inside to the big house, the main house, not a big house, and maybe watch some more YouTube, maybe watch a Netflix video, or I'm gonna get my second phone here, see what time it is, it's 10 minutes after nine. I may, um, Sorry, I was looking, I got another phone here. I got, a, this is my American phone, I got a Panamanian phone. Panamanian phone. I pay $24.66 a month for unlimited data, unlimited texting, calling, unlimited data here in Panama. And I can call anywhere in North America or South America, but I'm capped at so many minutes a minute, and it's like, I think 300 and some minutes a minute. And then I'll just, It'll, I'll be locked out, I think. I can't, if I reach that, I can't uh, keep calling. <laughs> so, but if you're curious about cost, $24.66. I'm getting what's called a Hoobla Auto discount. Because I have the uh, pension auto visa. That's a topic for another video. <laughs> All right. All right. So, with that being said, Maskey signing out. See ya.